pump, pump to see you. Here, here's kind of a thought, an opening O oh, statement, if you will. And it's, it's simply this idea that, that I believe that if you commit to and focus on something, you can become an authority in that field. Okay, I think, I think we see that. There are people in this room that are living, walking examples of that. Personally, I took it upon myself years ago to become a little bit of a Mexican food connoisseur for this area, okay? Uh, I, I would not say I'm, I'm, I'm the expert or the voice on it, but I have taken it seriously as far as where are some great chips? Where is the nice salsa? How about the texture of the tortilla? You know what I mean? These kind of things. Uh, the quality of the meat, okay? So you invest in something, you focus on something, you really can become an expert in that. Maybe a more substantial example would be someone like in the medical field. They would say, okay, I'm going to focus on this specific part of the field and become an expert. We, we have a chiropractor that's, that's in the house, Paxton, shameless plug, okay? He's great at it. He, he, is, he has become an expert. I had an experience one time. I had a toe that was hurting. I'm a couple minutes into the session. He's tapping the side of my head, and I'm thinking, Pax, there's not a chance it's going to work. All of a sudden, I get the tingles, and I'm walking out of there like a deer galloping around, okay? So he's become an expert in that because there's been a focus placed upon it. So, so what I want to put out there tonight is I believe what all of us are called to do is to have a focus and an intent as Christians, and then we get to walk in the authority that God's given us. There's a focus that's going to be necessary to obtain the authority. And, and I'm, going to, I'm going to give you a couple examples. There's, there's a couple people in the Bible we'll, we'll look at here, but authority is going to kind of be the theme, but I want you to understand the focus necessary for us to truly walk in it. Spiritual authority is the God-given right to receive and use God's power that flows from the indwelling Holy Spirit. That, that's, that's, a, that's a great working definition of, of spiritual authority and, and what I, I know to be true, man. It, it, we we're bragging on Pastor Bill and Sandy earlier. They know who they are. They know what they believe, and we get to hear that. We're the, we get to be the fruit of the confidence that they have in their focused study and approach to understanding God's word. So now what we get to do, man, as, as parents, that would be the hope. It's like, man, I want us to walk in God's authority and then transfer that to our kids. I love this quote. It says, his, his God's authority on earth, allows us to dare to go to all the nations. His authority in heaven gives us our only hope of success. And his presence with us leaves us with no other choice. Man, we, we, we get to live this audacious life because of the fact that we have an understanding of the authority that we walk in. I, I think sometimes in our democratic society, we lose a little bit of the focus or the understanding of what it would actually be to be in a kingdom physically. If, if you're the son or the daughter of a king, you walk and approach things differently because of the authority that you know you have. A lot of times that was symbolized by a ring or something. Somebody, they might not know who you are, they might not recognize your face, but they see the ring and all of a sudden the authority is understood. So they're going to walk differently. They're going to carry themselves differently. They're going to speak differently. Pastor Bill has said before, man, our words are meant for authority. What are we speaking? What are we saying? What do we know beyond a shadow of a doubt to be true so that we can walk in the authority attached to that conviction? So, so I'm going I'm to take you in, in Matthew. So turn there if you would. We'll, we'll, we'll look at a little story here, Matthew 14, to kind of start laying some groundwork for this. Because I think if we look at it like sons and daughters of a king, that helps make sense. But I believe that too often we're living a little bit of a distracted life that almost makes us forget what we could be walking in. There's a lot of things going on. There, there's things that present themselves. We, we could go on a rant about the social media era that we live in, all those things, but you understand that there are distractions in place and in play here that we've got to get beyond. And so, so I'm going to create a little context for where we're going here. Jesus, right before what we're about to dive into, just found out that his cousin, John the Baptist, was beheaded. 
He basically found that terrible news out that morning. And it says he actually got on a boat and went away, but a crowd followed him. Jesus moved with compassion, sees the crowd, does what Jesus does, and goes and starts ministering to the crowd after finding out this devastating news. Well, Jesus doing Jesus stuff, the crowd comes, you know the story. They're hungry, they've been there for a while. The disciples are like, man, should we, should we send them to get some fast food? What, what's the plan here? And he said, man, let's feed them. So the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000 has just happened. One of the most monumental moments in history and now Jesus tells his disciples, he goes, hey, get on a boat. I will catch up with you later. It's been a long day. So I'm going to pick up the story here, Matthew 14, 24. And this is great. This is a fun segue back to our disciples. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble, right? Like they've just done all this great stuff with Jesus. He sends them away just for a little bit. And these guys go and get in some trouble, okay? They're out on the water. The waves are getting big. It says they were far away from land for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. This is what's great about the Bible. It just kind of says it, and then we're like, wow, big deal. Okay, they're walking, Jesus walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified, like we all would be. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. That was their go-to. They've been with Jesus a little while now, Actually, a year before this is when they were freaking out in the boat and Jesus stood up and said, peace be still. So, so Jesus is just like consistently dominating the Sea of Galilee. Okay, this is what he does. He already told the sea to shut up a year ago, but here we are again a year later. These guys have been walking with Jesus and they're still freaking out. It's the winds are heavy. I think there's a ghost. Our pets' heads are falling off. All the stuff that the disciples are experiencing their reaction after seeing Jesus do all that he does, ah, oh, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid. Take courage. I am here. Another translation just says, I am. It's kind of Jesus dropped the mic statement. Then Peter called to him. We can all appreciate Peter, okay? Just a second ago, we thought it was a ghost. I'm going to make a bold move here. Peter says, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you, walking on the water. I don't know. This, this gives us like a little inclination into Peter's head, right? Like, instead of being like, hey, let's do our secret handshake. Hey, what's one thing nobody else knows about me? Like, for, for like a proof of person, Peter's thought process is, man, if it's really you, I don't know. Why don't we walk on some water? Right? This, this is where Peter goes with it. This is, this is his idea for proof of Jesus. And so, so, you know what it says? Jesus says, yes, come, Peter, pretty good idea. You're crazy, but I, I like it. Jesus said, so, so Peter went over to the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and waves, he was terrified and began to sink and yelled, save me, Lord. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back in the boat, the wind stopped, the disciples worshiped him and said, you really are the son of God. It takes a lot to impress these guys, right? Like, okay, now, today, all these years later, now, you know what? You really are. Peter almost died. You really are the son of God. Okay, I appreciate you grabbing him. But, but this is an interesting moment kind of in, in, the, in the history of things. All that build up, cousin's been beheaded. We fed 5,000 people. Jesus walking on the water, Peter says, hey, listen, to, to prove this right now, what I'm, what I'm asking of you, I want to walk on some water. And Jesus says, yes. And in that moment, Jesus' authority overwhelms or overtakes physical boundaries. The, the physics of this doesn't make sense. None of us have ever walked on water. Some of you may, some of you might. But the reality is in this moment, no one ever has. And Jesus says, I want to prove my authority right here, right now. Peter, come to me. But it's amazing what transpires after that. Peter kind of loses his faith. Peter gets distracted. Peter loses his focus. Man, when, when, when our focus is tight, when our focus is right, man, the distractions and the weaknesses get a lot smaller. What we focus on will get larger. 
when that focus was Jesus, he defied the, the law of physics. When he got distracted, he started to sink. And I, I, love, I love what Peter knew to do. Man, he called out, Jesus saved me, and he immediately did. That's what Jesus does. Swag and I were actually talking about this before, and Swag said, man, my favorite part of that story is, even though it was a fail, you've got a whole boat of disciples that are still deciding if it's Jesus or not, and Peter in the water in Jesus' arms. That was, that was a tough moment. That was, that was, that was wild. That, that was fear filled him, anxiety, whatever it was. But I'm telling you, he was the one that took a shot and just said, man, Jesus, if it's you, tell me to come to you. And Jesus said, absolutely, come on. I really believe that's what God's looking for from us. Man, man, I know you're up against a situation. I know your life is different. I know that there are these things. I know you're navigating the stuff with your kids right now. But I think what he's looking for is that step. It might be impossible. Other people might disagree. But will you take a step and will you let your focus be on me so that I can activate authority in your life? His focus on Jesus activated the authority in Peter's life to defy physics. We got to determine... Oftentimes, man, does our best option lie in the storm-tossed waves where Jesus is or the safety and security of what we currently know? I think that starts to get into the why of us tapping into this authority, this supernatural ability that is ours to have. We, we sing oceans, and it, it makes everybody weepy and, and, and cry because, man, I'm, I'm out here, God. I'm, I'm, in the, I'm in the waves. I'm feeling it. I'm, I'm experiencing it. But I'd rather be here with a chance to connect with you than I would be back in this position of safety. Every single step that Peter took was getting him further from the safety of the boat. Every single step he took was another literal step of faith, hoping that he wouldn't die and drown. Every moment of that situation was this faith-filled moment, and even in that, man got a little bit distracted. And I, I, I want to challenge us tonight. I hope that there's a couple little things that get stirred up inside of you where it's like, you know what? I need to activate some faith in this situation because I know what Jesus will do. Jesus said, come on. I'm, I'm going to put it out there. God, this is probably crazy, but if you'll just say it, man, I, I'm acknowledging that it's you. And I think that's a lot of times we're in situations like, man, is this my idea or is this a God idea? I'm telling you, I think what God's doing a lot of times saying, hey, Give it a shot. Let me tell you to come on and then stay focused on me and watch this thing work out on your behalf. It's who God is. We are sons and daughters. We are children of the king. And I think he's just looking at us saying, man, walk in the authority that I've already made available. At that one point, though, Peter's attention was drawn away from Jesus, the object of his faith. And it turned to the wind and the waves around him. In that moment of confusion, fear overpowered him. Man, what, what we're going to be is we're going to get so built up in the word. We're going to be so confident in who God is. Even when the diagnosis comes, we know how to respond to it. I'm not going to let that diagnosis create confusion because I know the truth. I'm not going to let that bad situation, I'm not going to let that person that says something about me change my perspective of the authority that I know I get to walk in. It is never going to be God's will for us to be overwhelmed or defeated. We know that going into it. If we're sure of that, if we're convinced of that, then it keeps things in its proper place. We keep our focus on God and recognize our authority. See, here's what's interesting. The power of Jesus in that situation didn't change. Peter changed. I, I, I need to, we got to grab this one. That Jesus' power in that moment never changed. The authority was always there. It was always available to Peter. Peter in this situation is what changed. And, and, and see, you might think about a situation in your life where it's like, well, man, where was God? I'm telling you, God was there. God is there. What was the distraction or what was that moment that got our focus off of God? We, we took the kids on a trip a month ago floating down the river, living the dream, saw that a storm was going to come, so we actually did a shorter float on purpose because we knew a storm was coming, so we thought, you know what, let's just give them the float experience, a lot of giggles, 
We'll see some great things. It's really cold. We'll be in there. It'll be awesome. And then we'll get out right before the storm. We'll time it perfectly. We'll go eat a warm meal, okay? We missed it by about five minutes, okay? Great plan. Great idea. Uh, we are literally can like see where we're supposed to get out. And I'm telling you, like a terrible movie, the skies turns black, the wind kicks up, and it just starts dumping rain. It's like there's no way that all just happens so quickly. We can see where we're trying to go. We've got kids in the water because we're having such a good time, and they're going to gently swim to the, to, the, to, the, to the bank, and then this hellacious storm blows in in two seconds, and now it's just crazy. Chaos ensued in literally 10 seconds. The raft started spinning. I'm like, what is happening in the water? The raft is spinning around. Kids are swimming. And we had a moment where we just said, hey, everybody look at me. You have to swim to the shore or we're going to miss our get out point. A couple of the kids were not having that idea, okay? It was, dad, I love you, but not today, okay? And so a couple of them started swimming back, which was bad because we're spinning around. Other kids are in the boat. I literally was trying to film part of it. And the guy I was with said, hey, I need you to paddle partner. We're spinning around. So there's no proof of this. I had to set the phone down. I'm holding a kid. Brave, was, our son was actually, he's three. He was kind of doing the paddling. I'm like, okay, I get it. We should paddle more than that. So we start paddling. Blakely, our oldest daughter, is the one that's kind of in the middle. The other kids all came back, and Blakely's kind of in no man's land. And it's like, hey, Blakely, listen to me. I can see the fear in her face. It's raining on her. We're spinning in circles. You have to swim to the shore or we're going to miss it. Dad, 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 swim. She puts her head down and swims, to her credit. We spin around. We pull the rest of the kids in the deal. It's nuts. We get to the bank right before we're about to miss the spot. It's pouring down rain, and it's like, you know what? This is the time to have a coaching moment. So in the rain, we have this whole, like, epic, you got to listen. But here's, the, here's my takeaway. One, don't have a coaching moment in the rain. Go up, get warm. <laughs> Tell them what you got to teach them, okay? It's lightning striking. They're all crying. They're crying. It's raining. I don't know the difference, right? So I'm crying. It's all good. The reality, though, is if, if they, in that moment, had ears to hear in immediate obedience, it's not a situation at all. It was the hesitation, and even as a dad, even hesitation on our part, but even to them, it's like, hey, here's what needs to happen so that we can get out of here safely. I need you to do it now. The swimming back and forth, the pausing, the waiting almost made a bad situation for everybody. And so I think sometimes, and I think Coach Bush actually said this, he said a lot of times delayed obedience equals disobedience. There's some, there's some power to that, but it's like, okay, man, Peter hesitated. Peter got distracted. Peter's, Peter's looking at these things, and all of a sudden, what could have been the greatest moment of all time, so you guys remember when Peter effortlessly just trusted Jesus and walked in the water, and it was amazing? It could have been that. Remember that float trip where it started raining, but it was no big deal. We all just swam to the shore. Now it's this big, crazy event, and they doubt dad for the rest of their lives. And, and we fixed that, okay? We had a coaching meeting in the rain and fixed it. But the, the delay, and I just I think about that for us. Man, what part of your life right now, you're like, you know what? I think, I think God's telling me to do that. I'm just going to, might need to wait it out a little bit. I probably need to ask a few more people their opinion about it. I, I, you know what? They're, they're not... It, and listen, I'm all about wise counsel, but the reality is if God's telling you to do something, we've got to do it. Let's not delay in it because that's what makes it a bad situation. We have authority to walk in. We have the ability to hear the voice of God, and we need to act on it, move on it, understand that we're walking in that authority, and get the results we're looking for. Turn to Ephesians 1.17. I want to, I want to just kind of make the case, like, okay, we're, we're, we're talking about this could be intrigued by the ability of this authority. So let's, let's see what Paul is trying to convince the Ephesians, God's intent for us. And he, he says a couple things he's praying for, what he's believing for, for for them. He said, I pray that the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus, would impart to you the riches of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation to know him through your deepening intimacy with him. I pray the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling, the wealth of God's glorious inheritance that he finds in us as holy ones. A lot of, a lot of powerful kind of one-liners here. I want you to soak this last part up. 
I pray that you will continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith. Then your lives will be an advertisement of this immense power as it works through you. This is the mighty power. So if there's any doubt or wonder of like, okay, where does God land on this? What, what actually is his will for us? Man, I'm telling you, Paul is nailing it here, and he's, he's begging the Ephesians to grab a hold of it. Man, I, I think God's looking down and saying, man, you, you guys in Tulsa, you, you broken arrow folks, you people that make up the Guts Church, man, I want you to grab a hold of this. This is the power I have intended for you. If we break it down, it's intimacy with him, which leads to wisdom and revelation. It's an understanding of our inheritance. All these things equal authority. It's recognizing the greatness of God's power through faith. And then, man, let's advertise it. Now, now let's tell some people that need to know about it, that need a breakthrough in their life. Let's let our lives be the promotion piece for that. His riches, his rights, his privileges, his power. Available to us on earth based on our relationship with Jesus. Man, this is what's been promised to us. This is what we get to walk in. This, this is what we get to take into that doctor's office. This is what we get to take into that business deal that you have tomorrow. This is what you get to take with the kid that's not connecting with you right now. This is what we get to take into our marriages that we're believing for breakthrough in. Man, this, this idea, this authority is what it is, but it's going to require our focus. God, I, I'm getting it. Man, I'm seeing what you have for me. I'm focused on it. Man, Ephesians 1.20 then goes into this mighty power was released when God raised Christ from the dead and exalted him to the place of highest honor. So now we're starting to recognize that we get to walk in authority at a resurrection level. That's us, man, hooked up, partnered in covenant with Jesus, and that authority is at a resurrection level. And here's what's amazing about that. Man, that, that resurrection power, man, that's, that's the changing, the natural order of things. That makes sense. Okay, okay, we're going to change the natural order. Death now becomes life. I like that. Man, defeat now becomes victory. Man, loss now becomes gain. Where has there been loss in your life that simply needs the, the God-given authority infused into it to make it gain? Where are we experiencing death in our life? And I'm telling you, we're going to give that, we're going to focus on God. He's going to grab us. We will walk in the water and we are going to see the opportunity in front of us to make it into life. That's who God is. That's, that's this sonship and, 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 and walking as a daughter that is available to us right now. Think about this. In Ephesians 2, 4, it's pretty powerful. At the very end of that verse, it says that, that Christ is seated, he has seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we're united with Christ Jesus. So, so now we're talking about a position of authority. Man, with Christ at God's right hand, that's the power hand, that's the, the, the right side, strong side, okay? That, that's where we get to operate and live from. But the reality of that is, man, now there's a new location. So, so God can't be, Jesus' power can't be overcome because it's above everything else. But we've been seated there with him, which gives us that same platform. See, al altitude matters. You guys that, that, that work for a company, own a company, the, the, the altitude, the perspective of us as owners, us as employees, wherever you're at, that matters. If, we, if we, we're in here, it's okay. I can, I can kind of see what's going on in the, the seats. If we were to get up on top of the building, we've got a very different perspective. Our altitude has elevated a little bit. If we got in a helicopter, remember the, the old Easter bunny thing and guys that hang out the side? Okay, if we were in a helicopter, man, the perspective's a lot different. Now I can see city blocks. Man, you go airplane at 30,000 feet, it's a wildly different perspective. So I think sometimes in our, in our companies, even in the church, man, the, the perspective of the owner is very different because they're seeing from a different altitude. Man, what I, what I want us to grab here is we've been seated with Christ, our perspective changes. 
We get to see the big picture. We get to see the end outcome. We don't have to get so isolated in, yes, that was a bad diagnosis, but we see the big picture because of where we're seated with Christ. See, Zoom's a game changer. I can be on a Zoom call here and have a presence in Chicago. Man, I can be seated in heaven and have an influence wherever I might be at the time. We're, we're operating from a different altitude. That's the authority that we get to walk in. So, so here, here's where I want to finish tonight. We made a little bit of a case for the authority that we get to walk in, but what I want to challenge everybody with is to protect what you allow to be an authority in your life. If it's not Bible-based, if it's not God, if, it, if it's not other people, man, I'm submitted to my pastor, I'm submitted to God, you're submitted to your boss at work, those, those things, those line up. But what I want to protect from are those thoughts that don't line up with the word. We're not going to give that a place of authority. Those opinions of other people that know the old you but aren't giving space for the new you, we're not giving that a place of authority. Man, we're understanding the authority we get to walk in and we're going to protect the authority that we allow to come to us and operate through us. Matthew 10, 1, Jesus called his disciples and gave authority to cast out evil spirits, heal every kind of disease. Matthew 10, 8, heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy, cast out demons, give as freely as you've received. That's our kind of power. We're not giving a place to anything that doesn't honor God or project, man, future with God. So, so let's kind of take this full circle. I want to show you another example of Peter. And again, I want to give you a little bit of context. Peter has this moment on the boat where he, he makes a bold move and gets distracted. Well, from there, Jesus has his, his moment. He's, he's at the Last Supper and he's like, hey, somebody's going to deny me. And Peter's like, I'll never deny you. And a couple hours later, he isn't brave enough to stand up to three different types of people and denies Jesus three times. Well, then, good old Peter, Jesus raises again and has this unbelievable restoration moment with Jesus. 50 days from then, 50 days from when he denied Jesus, it's 50 days later that we pick up on the story that we all know in Acts where he's walking into a, the temple at 3 o'clock in the afternoon at the gate called Beautiful. So, so Peter's kind of been on this journey. Peter's been on a journey like us. We, we have the benefit of, of reading this and, and having a full understanding of the authority. Peter saw it in action with Jesus, live and in color, in person. And it's been 50 days since the denial, but since then he's been filled with the Holy Spirit. So he's got an understanding, he's got a fresh revelation of the power of the Holy Spirit and what that should look like. Acts 3.1 says, Peter and John were going to the temple at the hour of prayer, 3 o'clock. A man who had been unable to walk from birth was being carried along, and they used to sit down every day at the gate of the temple so that he could beg alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he began to ask them for coins. But Peter, along with John, stared at him intently and said, look at us. See, Peter had learned a valuable lesson when he sunk in the Sea of Galilee. His attention and his focus got off of Jesus. And in that moment, he sunk. So now, after everything Peter's been through, all the wild experiences that Peter's had, he denied Jesus and then Jesus restored him. Now he's been filled with the Holy Spirit and he has an understanding of his authority. But he knows one thing. If you are gonna be healed, if you're going to be activated by this authority, you've got to look at me. I need your full focused attention and then Jesus can do what Jesus does. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm asking Guts Church tonight, man, can we learn? I, I'm, I'm asking that of myself. Man, have there been times where I've been distracted? Man, God's trying to do something great. There's a move of God. Man, there's momentum and we get distracted. And I'm telling you, if we'll give it our focused attention, I'm not getting anything. I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on this so much that the weakness and the distraction becomes minuscule. Man, he looked at the guy. He, he said it's, they stared at him and said, look at me. I need your full attention 
for this to activate inside of you. The man began to pay attention, eagerly expecting to receive something from them. See, I think the guy's probably hoping for some cash, but there was an expectation, and that's always going to be critical in this. Peter said, silver and gold I don't have, but what I do have I'll give you in the name, in the authority and the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Begin now to walk and go on walking. He sees the man's right hand. Pretty cool correlation there. It's the hand of power. He was going to distribute his power to that man's power. And he, with a firm grip, raised him up. At once, his feet and ankles became strong and steady. And with a leap, he stood up and began to walk. See, this fellow was focused. He's laying there. He's desperate. He's finally getting a little bit of attention. And Peter demanded it of him and said, man, look at me. And then there was a distribution of strength from one man to another. Now it's activated. Peter says, get up. And the man leaped. He did his part. I don't even know how to leap. I don't know what leaping feels like. I've never leapt before. But in that moment, he thought, I will do whatever I can in this moment. It says he leapt up and kept leaping. He jumps all through the synagogue. He jumps, he jumps all around, and then people are freaking out. And now Peter, 50 days removed from denying Jesus, is walking in such a new level of authority, man, he's telling everybody about the power of God. Let me be very clear. Jesus, who you crucified, is the reason this happened. Knowing full well he wasn't perfect in the process. My challenge to us tonight, man, let's be the men and women that are focused on God and as a result of that, activate the authority in our lives. See, now, now we get to be authorized dealers of authority. We, we have an open account. We, we can function in that. It's ours to withdraw from. Man, I'm telling you, the power has always been there. Any, any, any time we're not tapping into or receiving the power, let's take responsibility and say, well, well, yes, my focus got off. Now it's back. And that's, that's the simple prayer I'm going to have for you tonight. Man, if you're in here tonight, and it's like, listen, I'm, I, I will admit there has been some distraction. My focus hasn't been where it needs to be to activate the authority. If that's you tonight, would you just raise your hand? I'm going to get in agreement with you and let's pray for this because I'm telling you there's authority waiting for you. Great job. Yeah, a bunch of hands. What has been distracting you? And now let's get out in front of it. Let's acknowledge it and then attack it. That's how we win. That, that's how this goes from defeat to victory. Remember, we have resurrection authority. Death to life. Loss to gain, defeat to victory. That's what's about to happen. Acknowledge the distraction. What has crept in and stole the focus? Let's get it back. It's all Jesus, nothing but Jesus, and now miracles can happen. We set the stage with the music. Man, we're opening our mouths and miracles are breaking out. That's what happens with authority. Second question tonight, real simple. Love this idea. But man, I'm telling you what, what I need. I, I, don't, I don't know that I have a active relationship with Jesus. If that's you tonight, you might need to re-up or it might be your first time. Man, I gotta get my life right with God. Would you raise your hand too? We're gonna pray for you as well. Good job. Great job. Came to church on a Wednesday night. We're getting our lives right and we are walking out of here full of the God authority. Let's pray together. God, I thank you so much for who you are. God, thank you for this house. God, thank you that we, we get to operate in this. We get to walk in this. So I get an agreement right now. As a church, we get an agreement right now. God, our focus will be on you. God, we will eliminate the distractions. God, we're gonna operate from that level, from that altitude of your authority, seated with you. 
God, I just thank you, God, that you give us a supernatural ability to recognize what would distract us and to eliminate it. God, you deserve and you get our full focus. And God, I thank you for the, the, the folks that are getting their life right tonight. Church, if you would, repeat after me. Dear God, I give you my life, every part of it. God, I hold nothing back. I make Jesus the Lord of my life. I'm all in. I'm free from sin. I'm going to heaven. And I'm walking in authority here on earth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in to Guts Church YouTube channel. I'm Pastor Chano Trevino, the assistant pastor here at Guts Church. And on behalf of our leadership team, our staff, our church, it's our hope that this message met you right where you are. If it did, I bet there's someone you know who could use the encouragement of this message in their life. And you sharing it with them can make all the difference. The mission of Guts Church is to help people win. And you can be a part of that simply by sharing, or better yet, inviting someone to tune into Guts Church online with you every week. Take that next step to be a part of what God is doing right now in this moment in time by being committed to showing up, placing a premium on God's word, and receiving all that God has for you. You can share this message, gather your friends for services, make it a priority to make this the place you want to be. God has so much for you. I truly believe that. We love you. We're praying for you. Can't wait to see you soon.